Aaron and Melissa here for True Street Media. Now, when a Supreme Court justice warns that martial law and FEMA camps could be coming, you should pay attention. Yeah, this came out just a couple of hours ago on the Washington Examiner. Apparently, Justice Scalia is predicting the Supreme Court will eventually authorize another wartime abuse of civil rights, such as the internment camps for Japanese Americans during World War II. He said, quote, you're kidding yourself if you think the same thing will not happen again. And he was talking to the University of Hawaii Law School discussing Kurimatsu versus the United States, which was a court case that basically upheld the executive order that allowed for the internment camps during World War II. The local Associated Press report quotes Scalia as using a Latin phrase that means, in times of war the laws fall silent, to explain why the court erred in that decision and will do so again. So that's what he's saying. And a lot of people think FEMA camps are never going to happen. That's never going to happen here. That's not even a, a thing that could ever possibly happen in modern day America. Those people obviously do not know some of the history of this country because during World War II, Executive Order 9066 was signed by Franklin Roosevelt on February 19, 1942, and we interned 120,000 Japanese Americans into military guarded camps, essentially FEMA camps, before FEMA was a thing. Okay, this happened. You can go find pictures of this everywhere, and if you haven't seen these pictures, they're pretty heartbreaking. These people did not want to be here. They did not want to go here, and they were forced into this, and they were guarded, as you can see, and they were lined up, and they were forced into these camps. And why are we in this climate? Why is this going to happen again? Look what happened after 9-11. People willingly handed over more and more and more power to the government as fear intensified and as government power amplified and it still exists. It's still growing under Obama and maybe the 9-11 stuff has died off, but there will be new emergencies and among them is the real possibility of an economic disaster, a total financial collapse and the possibility that the government would again look to interning people and abusing its power. I mean, look what happened after Hurricane Katrina when all of those people were forced into the Superdome. Were they allowed to leave? No, they weren't. People that tried to leave, these people that tried to cross the bridge, they were trying to leave New Orleans, six of them were shot, two of them were killed just for trying to leave. So if that's not internment, I'm not really sure what is. And there are all kinds, this is on the ForbiddenKnowledge.com, there are a bunch of executive orders that have been signed in relation to FEMA camps. I mean, I'll just run over this really fast. Executive Order 10990 allows the government to take over all modes of transportation and control of highways and seaports. Executive Order 10995 allows the government to seize and control communication media. Executive Order 10997 allows the government to take over all electrical power, gas, petroleum, fuels, and minerals. Executive Order 10998 allows the government to take over all food resources and farms. Executive Order 1100 allows the government to mobilize civilians into work brigades under government supervision. Executive Order 11001 allows the government to take over all health, education, and welfare functions. Executive Order 11002 designates the Postmaster General to operate a national registration of all persons. Executive Order 11003 allows the government to take over all airports and aircraft, including commercial aircraft. Executive Order 11004 allows the Housing and Finance Authority to relocate communities, build new housing with public funds, designate areas to be abandoned, and establish new locations for populations. You just think of the power just with relocating entire populations and communities. Again, uh, you've probably heard about how H.R. 645, the Establishment of Emergency Centers Act, was introduced. Not yet a law, they'll probably keep introducing it, but it doesn't really matter because Executive Order 9066, uh, which allowed for the internment of Japanese, was stroke of the pen. A stroke of the pen has been the declared preferred practice of Obama today. It was used and abused by Bush and will be used and abused by future presidents. As long as they can make executive orders, they could change the status quo overnight. I mean, look at this. It continues. Executive Order 11005 allows the government to take over railroads, inland waterways, and public storage facilities. Executive Order 11051 specifies the responsibility of the Office of Emergency Planning and gives authorization to put all executive orders into effect in times of increased international tensions and economic or financial crisis. Think about that. Executive Order 11049 assigns emergency preparedness function to federal departments and agencies, consolidating 21 operative executive orders issued over a 15-year period. And Executive Order 11921 allows FEMA to develop plans to establish control over the mechanisms of production and distribution of energy sources, wages, salaries, credit, and the flow of money in the U.S. financial institutions in any undefined national emergency. Any undefined national emergency. 
It also provides that when a state of emergency is declared by the president, Congress cannot review that action for six months. FEMA has broad powers in every aspect of the nation, and we've been to a FEMA camp. We showed you a FEMA camp that's here in Taylor, Texas. So we're driving right now by the T. Don Hutto Residential Facility. It's a detention center maintained by Homeland Security and ICE, the Department of Immigration and Yeah, Customs. and I've been to some of the drills, too, where they plan to use sports stadiums to keep children, school children, people from the community in times of crisis. The architecture's all there, and the continuity of government has been set up in the shadows to keep power with those people involved in the power structure outside of the Constitution, and it's all ready to go at the stroke of a pen, at the declaration of an emergency. Doesn't really matter if it's a false flag or a financial collapse or some other pretext. They are ready to seize power and put people basically behind bars, not in the name of them committing crimes, but in the name of keeping order and preserving the great United States power structure, which again, won't be constitutional, but it will be continuing. So when you have a Supreme Court justice talking about how this will happen again, that's something you need to pay attention to. And he's warning that the Supreme Court will, will uphold it. They'll rubber stamp it, basically. I mean, let's think about this. We put more people in prison per capita than any other country in the entire world. And we are not the largest country by far. And we're building new prisons all the time. What do we need those for? 